the players voting on this think what I believe the general public mostly thinks about Dak, which is he is a league average NFL starter. That he is his best traits are the intangible leadership and the availability, and that as a passer, he's limited. And that, I mean, if Carson Wentz is the 15th on this list, it's very hard to find a quarterback that was on this top 100 of those 15 quarterbacks that you can make a compelling case Dak should be ahead of, that Dak should replace. I know some people are down on Kirk Cousins, so some people would say Kirk because he's not great in big games, but Kirk's overall numbers are so far and away greater than Dak Prescott's, and his body of work is far, is greater, yeah. far greater, even if Kirk hasn't done in the playoffs the way Dak has. Maybe you can you can wiggle yourself into an argument. He shouldn't be out of the top 15. He should be 15th. But that's as high as it gets. There's no one else on this list, and it speaks to the depth of talent at the position. As we've been talking about all offseason, the old guys aren't retiring. The young guys nope. are really good quick, and the veterans like Rodgers and Wilson and Luck are right in the apex prime of their career, so you all of a sudden have a glut of really good quarterbacks. It's great for the fans. It's not great for Dax where he falls in the ranking. I, I don't think we're that far removed from an era of football where Dak would have been in the argument to be a top 10 quarterback. But that's not the era we're in right now. So in this regard, I think it's pretty obvious that these 15 guys, player for player, are better than Dak, and you'd feel more comfortable with them being your quarterback going into this season. So why is it then the Cowboys are going to pay Dak Prescott as if he's one of the top four quarterbacks, three quarterbacks, whoever it is in the league? I mean, what do they see that we're not seeing or that the NFL players who voted on this aren't seeing? Yeah, I remember late in my career, Jerry Rice, at that time, he was the highest paid, and he got a new deal that broke the record for wide receivers. And Michael Irvin got a deal right after that. And then I went to my general manager and was like, I, I, I want that same kind of deal. And he's like, uh, you're not Jerry Rice. You know, we don't consider, we, see, we consider Jerry Rice to be the premier, not only wide receiver, but one of the premier football players. Well, what about Mike Irvin? Well, yeah, we look at you and Mike, man. You guys are, are about the same. I said, well, we'll call up Mike. I had Mike's number. He called him on the phone. Went, hey, it's the playmaker. I'm not available right now. <laughs> I said, what did it say? He said, he's not available right now. I said, okay. I'm your answer, bro. <laughs> all right, he's not available. I'm all you have. And the Cowboys, this is their answer. And he's as good as what we see on tape. It's not like, oh, you know, they're, they're holding him back. No. In his first year, he had a phenomenal year. And the players gave him credit for that. But in the two years after that, he has not been in the top 100. We are in a unique situation in pro football where we have four guys in their late 30s to 40s that are playing phenomenal football still at a high level. So the first four to ten spots, they're gone. So now we got these young players that are coming in, and they're playing great football immediately. In their first four years, they're playing MVP caliber football. So now a guy like Dak, where we're throwing the ball league-wide 65% of the time, he's on a grinded out, three all-pro offensive linemen, a great running back, a good defense. The players see that. So Dak, he's going to have a hard time moving up. He has a hard time throwing the ball. If they take away the running game, he has a hard time throwing. The players realize that. There are too many guys in 2019 that throw the ball down the field with precision that I could say, if they were on the Dallas Cowboys, are the Dallas Cowboys better? And you'd be like, yes. To me, what Dak Prescott needs to do is go back, get this contract, and go back to being a true dual threat quarterback. Well, I will run the ball and I will throw it because I don't think he's going to be an elite thrower ever. But his athleticism, the combination, that's how Dallas can win. And that's how they can up the red number, red zone percentage in scoring because they're awful. But that would make him different. That'd make him better than Lamar. It'd make him better than the other athletic quarterbacks. And it would put, there's no one that's a dual threat right now with balance so that could be that well and you mentioned the red zone because that is what to me really really damaged their offense last year being 26th in, in the nfl in red zone percentage scoring touchdowns on just 51 percent of their trips there warren sharp pointed this out yesterday i thought it was a really good point Dak's success rate when running in the red zone was one of the very best in football. He just didn't do it very often. The Cowboys didn't utilize that element of his game as, as often as they should have. Zeke, as great as he is, his success rate was below average running in the red zone, not because Zeke's not great, but because 
Everyone knew that's what they were going to do. They were loading up. They had those heavy fronts to where he had no holes to run through. So that is a way to, to get the most out of Dak Prescott. But the, the, the last point, the Cowboys have a tendency to wait on these deals, meaning into the offseason. And I, if they are going to re-sign Dak, I think they're going to regret letting Carson Wentz re-sign first, just like they might regret with Amari Cooper, letting Michael Thomas re-sign first, because all of a sudden the new standard is set in a different way, which ups the price just a few million here and a few right. million there, and that adds up. I would have imagined that especially since we heard around the time of the Major League Baseball All-Star break that Zeke was considering a holdout. We heard a couple weeks before training camp that Zeke was considering a holdout, and if he did hold out, he would potentially be going to Mexico. All those things have come to pass that the Cowboys would have had ready to go at least an offer that Zeke would have to strongly consider. At least an offer, not that he's going to accept immediately, but an offer that he could then counter and they could get down the path of getting this resolved because Zeke does not want to miss games of the regular season and the Cowboys desperately don't want to go into the regular season without him and they honestly don't even want to go into the regular season with him but with him having missed all of training camp. How many players have we seen miss training camp particularly at that position and then either start slow or suffer some sort of soft tissue injury. Let Bell always started a, slow. A hamstring that, yeah. injury. Absolutely. And so this is not ideal for either party. I'm, I am surprised that they are, according to Jane Slater, who's been all over this, that they seem to be not close on anything, that they Zeke values himself at Todd Gurley plus X, and evidently the Cowboys right now are valuing him at Todd Gurley minus Y. And so that's a big problem, and it's a problem that you don't imagine is going to be resolved in the short term here. Sure. Not to say it never gets resolved, but that it's not going to be resolved, you know, by this time next week. And then all of a sudden you're approaching their second preseason game and so on and so forth. So it's bad news for the Cowboys because he's their best player. It's amazing how the Cowboys have supported Zeke regardless. Even from the beginning when they drafted him, there was an investigation in Ohio State. They've always supported him. Been a couple incidents off the field. They have supported him. And I was like, man, he's the best player on the team. They're going to pay him. I've seen Jerry support great players who had issues there in Dallas. That's the way Jerry – he is – he is a player's owner. People talk about a player's coach. He is a player's owner because he will bat for you. He will vouch for you. He will even say things not necessarily true yeah. about you to be able to try to sway people. He is that type of strong salesman. But in doing this, Jenna, I believe what you told me. They holding everything uh, that Zeke has done off the field. They're holding it against him. That's the reason why they're far apart in guarantees and in number of, of average per year. Exactly what you said. They have taken into consideration, can we trust this guy? And I was, man, I was trying to put that on the back burner because I know Jerry. And I know how he supported the players. But I'm back to what you're saying, Jenna. I believe you. Yeah. They're looking at all that off-the-field stuff, and they're going to hold it against them. Not publicly but privately in this negotiation, and they're going to try to move this off until he's in the final year of his contract where they've already paid Dak. They've already given Amari either the franchise tag or given him his extension because of we can't trust him long term. If they give him, he's got two years left. If they give him a minimum of a three-year, he's under contract for five, five years. years. What are the chances of something happening? I believe the Dallas Cowboys are looking at that, and that's one of the big holdups in this deal. How do you think this plays out, Nick? Well, I mean, if they if their plan is what you you guys are discussing as possible, which is we'll pay you in a year, then I think he misses games. And is he getting fined right now? Forty grand a day. Every day that he misses training, every day forty thousand, and then with games. And well, then you don't get your game check. I mean, that's what the so you miss games. You're, the, the way NFL players get paid is you, you take your salary, divide it by 17. You get that every week of the season. And yep. so once everybody you, makes the same thing in training camp, vested players and the rookies. There's two. There's a pay scale. Vest, vested players make a certain amount. It's not a lot of money. Yeah, it's yeah. nominal. It's not 40 grand a day. Right now, he's he's way in the negative. Because it's, I think it's less than 2,000 a week you make. Okay. Right. So training camp, just almost throw that aside. Sure. You get paid in the regular season. It's one of the reasons why, unfortunately, some of these guys sometimes – take out loans in the offseason, waiting for the contract to come in, like mm -hmm. because you get all your money in those four months of the year. But Stephen Jones has now, in the last two days, said the same thing that I find really interesting, which is reminding everyone, guys, 
this money, whatever money we save on Zeke, is not going, he initially said in Jerry's pocket. Yesterday he added, he said Jerry's pocket or my pocket. When he was talking about Dak, Amari, and mm -hmm. Zeke and not wanting to set contract standards, the high watermarks, he said, guys, any money we save goes to other players on the roster. His point being, and it's correct, we spend up to the cap every year. We're not a cheap team. We're not one of these teams that comes in at the salary floor, 89%. Mm -hmm. So a You're also one of the highest earning teams. Absolutely. So don't be don't don't cry poor. There's no cry a hundred percent. But his point is, and I think he's not just talking to the media there. I think he's talking to the players, where he's reminding them, hey guys, you can hold us over for all this money if you want. But that's your right tackle, Lyle Collins, the money we had for him. That's your corner, Byron Jones, the money we yeah. had for him. Now, I know your philosophy is that's their problem, and I agree with you in that. That is every, every player's in business for themselves. But Steven's trying to change the narrative a bit as far as it's not Zeke versus the Cowboys. It's Zeke versus the Cowboys and some other guys we'd like to pay, which could add some added pressure on him if he allows There's it There's eight to ten teams in the league can win. And on all these teams, they're talented players. The pie is still the same size for every team. So every owner should have the, that messaging point that Steven has. Listen, we're going to try to sign players, all right? We're, we're going to try to win as many games as possible. Everything you can do to help me is going to help us. Kevin Durant took a little haircut. Kyrie Irving took a little haircut. So they can add some other players yeah. to fulfill that whole roster. It becomes important when you're trying to win championships. That $3 million they gave Jason Witten. That could have been money well spent yes. on right. something else. Right. So why he's in Mexico, they're paying some old veteran players, so the pie is only so big. I think the messaging from Dallas has been good. And the one other thing they said yesterday, which echoes exactly what you said yesterday morning, is Stephen said, we believe there is an inherent value to being a Dallas Cowboy. No doubt. That there is particular, he didn't say this part, but I think it's true, particularly for offensive players, for guys who touch the football, meaning quarterback, wide receiver, running back, you have to build into it the same way we talk about, well, are you in a high tax state or a low tax state? You know, build that into your contract sure. thoughts. How much money are you actually getting? He's saying, you stay a Cowboy, your value as far as earnings during and post-career is greatly enhanced than even being in Texas with the Houston Texans, mm -hmm. certainly being in Florida with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Look at all the great teams. Cowboys. Troy Aikman, where does he live? Oh, Dallas. Michael Irvin, where does he live? Dallas. Dion played a bunch of places. Where does he live? Dallas. Because mm -hmm. they now, make money in Dallas. The mistake Stephen Jones made was saying way back when that we're going to start these negotiations with Zeke at girly money. Now 100%. he's just trying to that. That was a young that. general manager mistake. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.